Congratulations on adopting your new dog. Thank you so much for adopting from this particular rescue. It is a great thing to adopt a dog in need of a family and it benefits the family as well. This video is a quick guide to make sure your dog and you are set up for success. Something very important to remember, your home is still a very new environment for your newly adopted dog. And even though your dog might look like he's having a blast and he's super happy to be home now, you have to still realize it's an animal that just got brought into a brand new environment. Your home is still a new environment. You and your family, your other dogs if that's the case, are still very new types of stimuli for your dog that your dog is not used to. The environment your dog came from, whether it was a rescue, a foster, or even right out of the streets, it's an environment that your dog, even though it may not have been the most ideal environment, it's an environment that your dog is familiar with. Now we grab this dog and put him in your home, and it is a new environment. It does take some adapting. It does take some adjusting and it is going to take a little bit of time for your dog to perceive this new environment as something very predictable and something that your dog can call home. Now some dogs will adapt to their environment very quickly. You'll bring them home and within an hour they're acting like they've been there their entire lives and that might be in fact the type of dog that you adopted but there are some dogs that will take several days some will even take several weeks before they finally adjust to that environment. The best thing to do is to assume that it is going to take at least several days before your dog is fully acclimated to the new environment, fully acclimated to the new people, the new dogs, the new house, the new routine. All of that takes a little bit of adjusting to. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that during that transition period, your dog is not overwhelmed with too many new things all at once. I know you're going to have friends and family that are going to be super excited to see your new dog, but you still have to be careful. If we overload the dog with too many things too soon during the adjustment period, this could set the dog up for failure. It could set the dog up for mistakes that shouldn't happen and mistakes that could be easily be avoided for your dog's sake and for your sake, keep the adjustment period sort of irrelevant and uneventful. Now, a few things to remember about your dog. It is an animal and as such, there are some things that your animal needs in order to live a fulfilled life. Your dog needs some basic needs to be met that a lot of people don't think about. And that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video. So I'm gonna be going over those things that will make sure your dog stays fulfilled and happy for a very long time. Okay, one very important thing is give them their space. Okay, not every dog is a social butterfly. Your dog might be, but even the social butterflies need to have their space. So regardless of what kind of dog you got, whether it was a puppy, a very friendly dog, or an older dog, give that dog their space. Let them sort of come to you. Let them come to your guests. Don't have your guests overwhelm your dog and approach your dog and don't have your other dogs immediately meet your dog. Let your dog have some space. If your dog decides to walk away from the interaction, let him walk away from the interaction. If you bring your dog to a new type of environment within your home and your dog chooses to walk away, respect that. If your other dogs start interacting with your dog constantly and they just keep looking for your dog and your new dog keeps looking for opportunities to take a little bit of a break, you need to interrupt that and move your other dog away. This is especially important if you have other dogs in the household or other pets in the household. The thing that is very important for every dog to have is they need to have their sense of personal space. When they have that personal space constantly violated, they could give you responses that are not the most ideal. Responses that the average person will look at and go, oh, my dog is being aggressive. I don't understand why my dog doesn't like me or doesn't like my kids or doesn't like my other dogs. A lot of times, dogs want their personal space. 
So if you have other dogs, make sure that there is plenty of break time. Make sure that your other dog is respectful to your new dog. On the flip side, make sure your new dog is also respectful to your other dogs, okay? Your new dog that you just adopted might be a very social dog. You also have to let that dog know, hey, you have to respect their personal space. It's very important for dogs to have that. When they don't have that, or when they don't respect the personal space of another animal, this could lead to problems that could easily be prevented. The other two things that are very, very important in order for your dog to be very fulfilled is your dog has to have physical exercise and mental exercise. If you think about your dog and you think about other animals, physical and mental exercise is a daily thing, okay? Looking for food, looking for shelter, living day to day requires mental and physical exercise. What happens with our dogs is we provide everything for them. Rightfully so, they are our dogs. We feed them, we take care of their problems. They don't really have to survive when they are in our care. They just have to be there and, and all their needs are taken care of. But when that happens, mental and physical exercise tend to be neglected. So for that reason, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this dog gets to exercise every day. That could be being on a treadmill, that could be going for walks, that could be running, that could be chasing a toy, playing tug, whatever type of activity that would suffice as physical exercise. The other thing is mental exercise. Mental exercise will provide way more for your dog than a lot of things that you can provide them. Mental exercise comes in the form of puzzles. These puzzles could be in the form of dog training. Learning new skills requires mental exercise. This could also be in the form of interactive toys. Interactive toys are the types of toys that you put food in them, and now the dog has to figure out how to get the food out of that toy. If you're going to do that, make sure that it is done safely. Don't use one interactive toy, give it to your dog, and then have your other dogs fight over that same toy. You have to make sure that their personal space is respected. So if you're gonna give an interactive toy, make sure that that dog, only that dog has access to that interactive toy during that play session. Don't put it in the middle of your other dogs because this will be very chaotic and it could lead to fights. Another thing that is super important when it comes to owning a dog is providing them with clarity and consistency. Make sure that your rules are the same for every single situation. Make sure that when you have a set of rules that you are consistent. So if jumping on people is something you don't like, make sure you don't reward that behavior when you feel like it. Because what happens is when jumping on you as an example is acceptable sometimes, but not acceptable in other instances, this could create confusion and that confusion could lead to the dog now not understanding the rules, which could lead to them acting as though they're very unruly. So clarity and consistency. So if bolting through the door is never acceptable, you have to make sure that it's not acceptable. You have to make sure that you let your dog know that they have to wait by the door until you say it's okay to leave that doorway. Obviously, you might need some help from a trainer when it comes to some of these things, but the bottom line is make sure that your rules are consistent, that they are absolutely consistent so that there's plenty of clarity in that relationship between you and your dog. And speaking of dog training, I wrote a book on this very topic. It is on Amazon. It's called Selecting the Right Dog Trainer. It was written by me. And the reason I wrote this book was to help people like you select the right dog trainer. The industry is unfortunately flooded with very unprofessional dog trainers, with dog trainers with very little education or trainers that are very unethical and will not take care of your dogs. To the average consumer, it's very difficult to be able to pick out and tell who is the right dog trainer, but this book gives you a lot of help in being able to understand and pick out certain red flags so that you can select the right dog trainer. 
Additionally, this other book might be of interest to you, which is Common Myths About Dogs Debunked. In this book, I talk about different myths that are very common when it comes to dog ownership. And these are myths that don't always align with reality. They're myths that came from somewhere. And so what I do in this book is I address the root of these myths, why it might be in some instances appropriate. Some of these myths are completely based on myth.